and welcome to episode 86 of the Graceful Tingle Podcast. I'm Mimi Kate and I am so happy that you are here with me today to join me for the very first episode of 2022 and it's going to be a good one. I'm excited for today. I have quite a few things to share with you guys to talk about but also a couple of things that I wanted to mention here up front. First of all, there are not going to be show notes for this week's episode. Me and my family are still in the midst of the holiday season. We're actually going out of town next week, so the podcast will go live as normal, but I just won't be able to um, put out show notes this week. It's also very relaxed around here. It's going to be a nice, just kind of peaceful, chatty episode. I'm excited for it. I think I need it. A little less structured, maybe, but... um, Yeah, I'm excited to catch you guys up on all of my projects, show some new things, um, some new designs. Yeah, I am excited about it. So today is Saturday, January 1st, 2022. This won't be going up until Tuesday, but today is the first. So happy new year. I hope that you have had a wonderful, wonderful start. Um, Today, it is very warm outside which the unfortunate part about that is that it is not a good thing. So the high today is like 75. I live in Alabama. So that's not super surprising, to be quite honest. Um, The bummer is that we're expecting some pretty severe weather tonight because a cold front is coming. So today, the high is like 75. Monday, so tomorrow is when, like, on Sunday, the cold front is really arriving. The temperature is going to be dropping all day. Um, On Monday, the high, I think, is 55. So that's Alabama for you. Um, Don't move here unless you're okay with inconsistent weather because that's what it is. But anyway, I'm praying that it doesn't get too terribly bad tonight. Anyways, I have lots of things to catch you guys up on. I have some really big news for Design Talk, which I am so pumped about. Um, But first, I do have a couple of finished objects that I want to share with you. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Okay, so I have just a couple of finished objects to share with you guys this week. The first one is a pair of socks. So these are my December socks. Um, Over the course of 2021, I made myself the goal to knit a pair of socks every single month that somehow correlated to that month. So I did like a different pattern. I did a different yarn, you know, something that somehow correlated. Like, for example, in March is St. Patrick's Day. I did a green yarn for my pair of socks. Um, for February, Valentine's Day, I did a pink pair, and then, like, you know, the pattern somehow correlated too, but, um, for December, I had two ideas. Um, I thought about doing, like, a vanilla pair of socks, which I haven't done, um, this month, like, or this year. I kind of tried to do, like, a patterned sock. It was honestly one of the goals. Um, but I decided to go ahead and cast on a pair of, like, specifically December socks. Um, I have the first one done. It's a sad story. (laughs) buddy so i chose the heel toe do si do pattern by k of the crazy sock lady an absolutely amazing pattern i love it so much i've knit two pairs of this pattern before in the past um this was going to be my third and i chose a red a white and a green yarn and i like did the super cute striping thing and i did contrast heels toes and cuffs um knit the entire sock with my usual recipe which for me and my foot size I cast on 56 stitches, do about a 60 round total leg that includes the cuff and after the heel, about a 45 round foot, 45, yeah, 45 rounds for the foot and then the toe. So I did that like normal, put the sock on and it is too small. Um, It's really because the front of this sock is a little bit tighter than usual because you're doing decreases to form this special little texture here. Um, or just design. It's what creates this chevron pattern. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I didn't mess it up. It just, my gauge was tighter than I thought it was. And apparently naturally tightened up with this, um, with the yarn and the needles that I was using. I have two pairs of my favorite pair of sock needles, which are my Chiagus. One of them is Fix Circular, which I prefer. The other is from an interchangeable set that are also amazing. Um, but something about the way that the cable is, it's thinner, and I think it changes my gauge just a little bit. And that's something that I try to keep in mind, but I forgot, um, while I was making these, and yeah, 
anyway so these are too small i had to scrap them because i'm not going to be able to wear them if they're too small so like and they were an annoying too small how like the stitches were completely stretched out and you could just tell like it was disappointing but it's okay so all of that to say these became my december socks <laughs> so they are vanilla socks i used um Hobie Moonwalk yarn, which I was so excited to try. This is something that I picked up from the um, Black Friday sale back in November, and I absolutely love this yarn. I have two more skeins of it in different colors, um, and it is just so fun. It's a self-striping yarn, and I went to great lengths to ensure that the socks matched because something about self-striping socks not matching for me, just I don't love it. So, Nothing against it, if that's what you love, that's awesome. But for me personally, something about my personality or whatever, I just really love striping socks to match. So, anyways, I made the match. I love these so much. They fit perfectly. They're so cozy. Um, I am planning on doing a full review of this yarn because it is a very unique sock yarn. And I think it would um, do it justice to have a full video on the channel. Um, to answer a couple of questions, just like quickly... Um, this yarn is very sparkly, and I would say that because of that, it does feel a little bit different. It's not as soft as, like, a traditional, um, 7525 base for socks. Um, it does not bother me because, one, my feet are less, less sensitive to the rest of my body. I think naturally because, you know, like, walking barefoot outside, having a thicker skin on the bottom of your feet, maybe. I don't know, but I just don't notice itchy yarn as much on my feet um so that does not bother me i would not call it itchy i just like for me myself i would make a whole pair, bunch of pair of socks out of this yarn and love every single pair i would not make a sweater out of this yarn because i wouldn't want to wear it unless i had like a long sleeve undershirt and that is super impractical where i live so anyway i just wanted to note that because i think it could be helpful for a lot of people again let me know if you'd be interested in a full review of this yarn because um that's definitely something that I'm planning on doing in the future. Probably once I start or make another pair of socks too. But anyways, I love these. Um, super special time. I started the first one on Christmas Day. And I actually knit the entire sock on Christmas Day. Um, I had a lot of knitting time for whatever reason. I really... I don't know. I think I, I opened... Um, I, I started the cuff before we kind of sat down all together as a family and opened our gifts. And then we open everything one at a time and, like, we're pretty slow about it. You know, just take it all in. Um, and so I had quite a bit of knitting time doing that. And then, um, yeah, I just knit throughout the day as well. So it was so, so nice. So, yes, that's when I knit the first sock. And then the second sock I knit, um, I cast on a little bit after that. And I kind of just took my time. I actually just finished the Afterthought Heel last night on December 31st. So I did not stay up till midnight. <laughs> By the way, lots of cool people do that. I am not one of those people. But, um, anyway, it was so fun to make these socks. Um, it's a really special way to just, you know, wear these next year or this year. And, um, remember that special week of Christmas and New Year's. Anyway, I'm very happy I have these done. I love them. They turned out so good. Um, very excited to wear and enjoy them for sure. Okay, my next finished object kind of gets me into the little announcement i was gonna save it for design talk but this pattern is actually um already released and i made a few of or made a few of them so i think i should just go ahead and talk about it so i am hosting a make along over the course of 2022 i am so pumped for this pretty nervous as well i'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie because i just love to have quite a few people participate um but we will have to see i'm really excited about this so i am hosting a make along it is for dish crawls so you can join our facebook group i will put a link in the description box below i have three new videos on my channel one for a knitted dish cloth pattern one for a crocheted dish cloth um and then also the make along announcement video that kind of goes into more detail um and shares like you know my thoughts behind it the rules which there really aren't any rules but just a couple of other little bits um about the mallet itself that I think would be very helpful. So, MAL stands for a make-along if you didn't already know that. Basically, um, I didn't want to limit it to just CAL, K-A-L, or CAL, 
CL. Um, I want to just be open to knitters and crocheters alike, which is why I have one knit pattern and one crochet pattern out. So I'm going to go ahead and show you those. Um, here is what the knitted dishcloth looks like. So this is a corner to corner dishcloth. Um, very easy to adjust the size to suit your preferences. So, you know, obviously feel free to do that. Um, and then here is the crochet dishcloth. So same idea. It's knit corner to corner. Um, I use the half double crochet stitch for this design, which I really love this stitch. It's probably my favorite, like, basic crochet stitch. Um, and I just think this, this stitch cloth turned out so cute. So one thing I do want to be sure and mention right up front, if you are considering joining, um, first of all, while these two patterns are specifically designed for the cow, for the mouth, excuse me, and they're free for you to enjoy, um, you can absolutely use any dish cloth pattern that you love. Like, the thought is just to make some dish cloths, build up a collection for yourself or as gifts throughout the year, um, and just to join the uh, fun community of makers along the way. So, anyway, I'm very excited about this. Um, I have been toying with the idea of hosting a make-along or knit-along or something like that for quite a while now, um, and I'm, I'm really excited to be able to do it for a project that I love making so much and that I love using. Um, and that's so simple too. So you can just make one dishcloth. You can make 52. That's my goal. I would love to knit or crochet one a week. That's my plan. Um, but anyway, I'm very excited about this and I hope that you consider joining us. So like I said, you can check out all of those videos on my channel. Um, I will link them down below as long as I remember. <laughs> um, and then I'll also link the Facebook group that you are more than welcome to join if you so desire. Um, you can share what yarn you're going to be using. You can share the patterns, your actual dish cloths. You can just share your thoughts. It's just a fun way um, and a fun group to be able to participate in throughout the entire year of 2022. I'm very excited. So I hope that you guys are too and that you are going to be joining us. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So anyway, I'm very excited about that. That is something that I spent a ton of time on over the past couple of weeks. Just getting everything ready logistically um, and then releasing everything this morning was quite a big feat. I'm not going to lie. Pattern releases in and of themselves are a lot because you just have to have, you know, all of the links in the right place and everything go live at the right time and in the right order so that everything works correctly. Um, I've got it down to a science like, you know, releasing one pattern, like I've done it a lot of times, so I just know what to expect, but releasing two patterns in a day is a little much, especially when they have, you know, accompanying video tutorials and all of that jazz, but regardless, um, it went smoothly and I am very thankful for that. So I hope that you consider joining us. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about it and I am really hopeful to keep up with my personal goal of making one a week. I think it is going to be a really, really good challenge. So anyways, I'm very excited about that. So that is all for finished objects. Just those couple of things. I do have two, I think. Maybe just one work in progress to talk about a little bit. Um, I have one thing that I'm going to be starting. Actually, two things that I'm going to be starting very soon. And then some really exciting new designs that I have been working on as well. So let's go ahead and hop into some whips. <music> Okay, so the first, um, I almost said finished object. <laughs> the first book in progress that I have to show you guys today is my advent blanket. So I have struggled with this project a little bit. I was really hopeful to, you know, keep up with it every single day. And then I got sick in the middle of December. I had finals and crazy work schedule at the beginning of December. Um, we went on a trip towards the end of December and then Christmas and everything like it I just ran out of time and I was working on gifts throughout all of that so I did not have the time every single day to devote to this blanket and then I had the goal to finish it before the end of the year um and I kind of realized like when I was working on it in the middle of the week that I just wanted to take my time with this project and not push myself to finish it by a certain date um it's gonna be done very soon of course but it's a really special project and I want to be able to look at it and remember, you know, everything I was doing across the couple of months that I took to make it. Remember each and every yarn and how special it was to open the day or the yarn every single day for the from the calendar. Um, anyway, so I want to remember that and not the like stress of wanting to finish it by a certain date because I have done that myself. I have done that to myself 
in the past and I am trying to be a little less I don't know all over the place I guess this year um but here is the blanket so far it has grown a good bit I think since we last chatted it's not like I actually remember where I was or anything like that because apparently I'm not organized for that but I am decreasing now which is very exciting so I am doing a corner to corner a granny square blanket I started way down at this yellow corner and then I increased for the first 12 days. Um, the calendar has 24 days. So I did the first 12 increasing and then the last 12 are going to be decreasing. Um, and yeah, I'm very, very excited about this project. So here is my, maybe I have an end that doesn't have as many ends. I need to take a second and weave in all of my ends again. I did that um, a little while ago when it was definitely a good move. So I should really do that again, I think. But Anyways, um, I've done that many rows in decreasing, so not a ton, but it is definitely getting a little bit shorter, um, the rows at least. And I am just loving this project. So the past couple of days I have done this pink and green color, and then this mauve pink is like my favorite one of the whole time. It was, it's so beautiful. I love that color. Um, and then this one is like a black, brown, green, and white kind of combo. Um, and then, let's see, this one is really pretty. Um, I think I might have done, like, two rows of the, hmm, gray stripe. Now that I'm looking at it, that's kind of funny. I totally did not mean to do that, but the mistakes that you find when you turn on the camera. So, basically, I am doing this row of gray in between each and every color, and I did two <sighs> after the orange. So, who knew? Totally okay, but anyway. I really love it. I think it's turning out great. I think it's such a pretty blanket. It is actually going to live right on this chair that I'm currently sitting on when it is done. I think it's going to be perfect. I've been wanting a nice blanket like this to throw over this chair just for, you know, decoration purposes um, for a while. And I think this is going to be the perfect one. So I'm very excited. I am still very much enjoying this blanket. I got this basket. Um, it had a gift in it, multiple gifts actually from my best friend, and it is now the perfect home for this blanket until it is finished, and probably future blankets, honestly, because it is a perfect, like it's huge, um, the squares, like the wire squares are just small enough to where, um, you know, yarn won't slide through, but big enough to where it looks cute, so anyway, I'm excited, um, I have a few days left, this is also one of my favorites, look at how beautiful this color is. I think it is so pretty. Um, this was the last day, this green, the perfect green. Um, and then this was another one of my favorites. This one is so fun. I think it'd be so cool to have like a full pair of socks in that color. That'd be awesome. But anyway, I'm excited to keep working on this here and there throughout this month, probably. I'm sure it'll be done at some point um, throughout January, but I am really enjoying it. And I'm gonna be doing just that until it is finished. And I think that is it for works in progress. I was planning on showing something else, but it's a design, so it technically doesn't go in this section. Um, anyway, I'm itching to start some new things, but I am also itching to crank out a bunch of designs and just get, um, you know, really excited to publish some fun things. I have lots and lots of patterns in the works, so I am very excited for the designs for 2022. It's going to be a very good year design-wise. It's going to be awesome. So anyway, let's just go ahead and hop into some design talk. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about today for some designs is a new beanie that is going to be coming out very soon. So I'm in the process of designing and making a brand new beanie collection. This is going to be a collection of super simple beanie patterns for fingering, DK, worsted, bulky, and super bulky yarns. So five new hat patterns. Um, they'll be releasing probably throughout the year. I'll release the first couple um, before spring hits, and then I will be releasing more towards the end of the year, I think, when it gets chilly again for the fall and winter season. Um, but I am so excited about this collection. It's an idea that I've had for quite a while, um, and then it just got put on the back burner this season, so I'm excited to start it. But for now, I have done the worsted beanie. So 
over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be launching the female weight version and probably the worsted weight. And then, like I said, I'll be saving some of them for closer to the end of the year as well. Um, but here is the worsted weight version. So I used Nipix Twill for this beanie, which is one of my absolute favorite yarns. This is the colorway Fiddlehead, I think, maybe. Um, it is such a beautiful green. It's so rich, so deep. Um, I love this color. It's one of my favorite colors for sure. So anyway, it's going to make a gorgeous beanie, very useful. Um, and I'm definitely excited to launch this pattern collection. So I'm not going to put it on because it would look ridiculous with my bun right now. But, um, yeah, I'm excited. I, yeah, I've been playing this for a while. So it's really exciting to finally be able to, um, make the beanies. I've had the patterns like written for a long time and then I finished them this week, like all of them. Um, so now it's just a matter of making the samples, which for a fee going away sample <laughs> takes a while. So that's what I'm going to be starting this week so that I can launch that pattern soon. But I'm very excited about it. So stay tuned for those patterns. And then speaking of beanies, I am working on what is going to be my first release of the year. And that is going to be a new bulky weight beanie. So I'm not going to release too much yet because I want it to be a surprise. But I am just working on the sample now. The pattern itself is completely done. Minus pictures. I'll have to get pictures of this after it's done, of course. But um, other than that, the pattern is complete, which is very exciting. Um, and here's what the brim looks like. I'm using Nipix Big O in mm, ice... Icicle? Icicle Heather, I think. I almost said Iceland, but I'm pretty sure it's Icicle um, Heather. And it's just a really beautiful wintry blue. It's going to be the perfect color for this design, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about this collection. Not collection, this beanie. Um, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun making it too. It's very quick. I love bulky white beanies because they just go by so fast. Um, and they are so simple and fun to make too. So anyway, that is the second design that I am working on. And let's see, what else do I have to show? I have one more, or I have a new, not one more. I'm only working on one currently. I'm about to start a second. Um, I am working on a new sock design. So this is an idea that I've had for so long. It took about a million tries to get it right. <laughs> and to be quite honest, it's still not exactly what I envisioned. So I'm going to be releasing quite a few sock patterns this year and I am so excited about that. Um, I've talked about it many times but socks are something that I have always wanted to make and just never really thought that I could um, and when I learned how it was extremely exciting. So now I am designing sock patterns and it has just been so so special. Um, so anyway, here is the newest sock design that I'm currently working on. Um, this is using self striping yarn. So this exact yarn is Felici in one of their new colors, um, Desert Rose. But of course, any self striping yarn would be absolutely beautiful with this pattern. Um, and here's what it looks like. So the front of the sock has this really beautiful texture um, that I think it is so pretty. And then the back is just striped. So I think this purple section is like intentionally twice as long as the others, which bothers me just a little bit. I'm not going to lie, um, but it's okay. Anyway, it's totally fine. And then this gray is um, Nipix Stroll and I think Ash. Let's look and make sure. Yeah, Ash. So I'm doing that for the heel, the toe, and the cuff. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying this very much. It took me so long, like I said, to actually get the design right, but... Now it is going smoothly, um, and I am having a lot of fun working on this project. So stay tuned for that new sock design. It'll be launching soon. Um, like I said, I'm really excited about it. Okay, and then um, I am going to be starting a new sock design very soon, but I have not done that yet. It's going to be really simple and perfect for any self striping yarn. I am working to write the pattern in such a way that it truly makes sense no matter what self striping yarn that you are using whether it's like narrower stripes or wider stripes and um, it's a really cool idea and i am very excited to bring it into fruition i thought i would go ahead and share the yarn that i'm going to be using today um because it is a uh, pair of socks for my dad for his birthday which is in early january so i gotta get going on these but i'm gonna be using some more felici this is the colorway base strap 
and it is like super bright colors my dad loves crazy socks so i am very excited to make these for him um and then i'm going to be using ash again for the heels the toes and the cuffs i really love using um a contrast yarn for those parts of the sock when i'm using self-striping yarn um, it's just a personal preference but i really love the way that it looks um, and then it, of course it also allows the self-striping yarn to go a little bit further though so sometimes you can even make two pairs of socks if you do that um but yeah i really like it so i'm excited to get started on those um yeah so stay tuned for that i think it's gonna be really fun i'll be sharing those next week for sure okay i have one more design that i have started and it is a new garment so i received this yarn for christmas as a gift um and here is what the yarn is so this is yarn Bee, which is the in-store brand for hobby lobby um and this is their tweed indeed line which i love tweed yarns i think they are so beautiful um and these are just such a pretty combination so this one is called blush tweed this green is ocean tweed and then this purple is grape tweed so they are so pretty together i love that combo so much um and then this blend is really nice too it is 46 percent acetate or cotton and then no 50, 50 46 percent acetate 46 percent cotton six percent viscose and two percent polyester so quite a blend but it feels very very nice it's extremely soft um i can definitely feel the cotton like it feels very sturdy but it's also really, really soft which is very nice um and here is the garment that i'm currently working on so this is going to be a t um i'm making a front and back panel like this and it's going to be very oversized obviously so the front and the back panel and then i will just seam the shoulders and make a little like probably a couple round sleeve for the sleeves and then it will just be like an oversized boxy tee with this really beautiful stitch pattern um yeah i am so excited about this project it is going so well um i am pumped about this i love the colors i love the stitch pattern um yeah it's really pretty so i am definitely excited to watch this grow and then to wear it this summer i think it's going to be so cute with leggings or jean shorts or jeans yeah it's gonna be amazing so stay tuned for that i am hoping to get the um the front and back panels are going to be the exact same so i'm hoping to get one of them done um this week that is the goal for this project and then this pattern will release this spring sometime i'm hoping um i'm aiming to have it out by may I think that's a pretty safe bet. Hopefully April, that would be really great. Um, but definitely somewhere around that timeline. Um, yeah, I am very excited about this project. So stay tuned for more updates about that because I think it is going to be so beautiful. And like I said, perfect for the spring and summer months. Um, especially if you choose like a 100% cotton yarn, I think that'd be really awesome too. So anyway, I'm also using a size eye hook for that if you're curious. So it took me so long to achieve a gauge that I liked with this yarn, um, but I finally did it, and I am very happy about that. So, anyways, I am working on so many fun things right now. It's going. It's been a really good start to the new year project and knitting-wise, um, and I'm very excited to see that continue. So, anyway, I do have a little devotion slash life update to share with you guys as we enter 2022 so i hope that you join me for that so for devotional today i kind of wanted to combine it with a little bit of a life update and just talk about reflection and looking back and how it's really good to do that but also to live in the present and the here and now instead of living in the past so something that we talked about in church recently is lot's wife and if you're familiar with that story um they were leaving the town that they currently lived in it was being destroyed because it was just an evil place and god wanted it to be no more and they were told to not look back they were told to walk and go to a different town and not look back and lot's wife looked back and when she did she turned into a pillar of salt 
Now, I find that little piece of the story very beautiful because salt was so valuable then. Um, so I think that that's a really, a really beautiful way for God to show mercy in that situation. He said what he was going to do, um, but he also still did something beautiful. But the point of that story is how um, important it is to not look back. I mean, obviously, there's so many things we can point from that, like obey God. We know that. But also... Um, it's very something that was made clear to me when we were talking about this in church. I always imagined, you know, Lot's wife, like they were walking back, and then I just always imagined her looking back quickly and then turning into a pillar of salt, like just immediate. But really, what our pastor was talking about is how most likely, like how that story should be interpreted, is she looked back with sadness like she wanted to go back to that place she didn't want it she didn't want to move forward she wanted to look back and like wish she was there she was looking back longingly and I think there was a huge difference in looking back at something that has happened in the past maybe in your own life and looking back as a way to remember that time and to remember what you gleaned from that time and to use that to know how to move forward I think there's a big difference in that and then looking back and living in that place. So, for example, maybe you have moved in the past. Um, when I was in third grade, our family moved. And I remember not wanting to move. Obviously, we live in a beautiful area. I am so grateful for this home of ours. But at the time, you know, my little nine-year-old self or however old I was thought it was just amazing to be living where we were. And I didn't understand any of the logistics on why we needed to move. But I remember my parents getting this house and me not wanting them to and not wanting to move and so now I can look at that and go oh it was really beautiful to realize where we live now as an awesome place but to see that the place where we live now is really important and where we need to be but it's not okay to look back and like oh I wish I could go back to that place you know and I think there's so many ways um that each of us can experience that experience looking back and realizing what we can learn from that situation and how to apply it in the future, and not looking back longingly, and wanting to go back to that place, because there's so many things God is teaching us right now, and there's so many things that He will always be teaching us if we have hearts that are eager to learn, Um, and I think it's really important to use what has happened in the past to better hold ourselves in the future. Um, The past few months have been just full of me learning so much, and learning what I believe and why I believe it and how important it is to be firm in that and to also understand the why behind it all. Um, And I think because of those experiences, I'm more confident now than I was. And so instead of looking back at that time and wishing something that um, I don't have anymore, I can look back and see what that taught me and apply that to the future. So that's definitely one of the really big, one of the biggest things that I learned in 2021. And I am excited to apply that to 2022 regardless of how crazy it is to say that we are in 2022 it's insane um 2022 is going to be a very big year i am in prayer over so many things for this year um and i'm sure that all of us are hopeful for it as well and yeah i think we all have big expectations and certain things that we can all rely on and hoping that they change this year um and then for me there are certain things that i have been you know, just in a season that I'm waiting on for so long, and I am hopeful that this is the year that those things will change if it's in God's plan. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a big year, and I'm very excited to see everything come to pass, um, you know, in personal life, in this business of mine, in work, and school. I will be graduating college in August of 2022, which is so exciting. I'm very excited to do that. Um, I will also be 20, turning 20 in May which is absolutely bonkers, and I'm choosing to not think about that right now. Um, but yes, I hope that you have all had such a wonderful start to this year. Um, the weather obviously is not ideal, but I'm thankful that the wind seems to have been calm enough to not affect the audio of this video too much. But like I said, I hope that you've had such a good start to 2022. I hope that you continue to have a good start and a wonderful, wonderful week. I'm super excited to be back Friday with a fun video, so definitely stay tuned for that. 
Um, and then, of course, a podcast, the next episode coming next week. So I hope that you're excited for that, too. Thank you so, so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Join our make-along. You can use all the links in the description box below to guide you where you need to be for that. And until next time, happy making. Bye.